Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new discovery from right here in the solar system. Something that we suspected for a very long time, but something that has finally been mathematically proven to be correct. And that something refers to the idea of the plane of the solar system. It looks like, unlike previously thought, our solar system has two planes, not just one. In other words, there's something new we just learned about our own home. But let's discuss this in a little bit more detail because there's a lot of things to unwrap here. First of all, generally speaking, this plane is called ecliptic. And this plane is somewhat different for every planet because every planet has a slightly different inclination while orbiting our own sun, with certain planets, like for example Mercury, you can kind of see, having the inclination of about 7 degrees, and planets like Jupiter having it almost at zero. So essentially ecliptic, or the orbital inclination, can be different depending on the planet. But overall though, for the most part, Every planet orbits the Sun in a relatively similar plane of orbit, with this somewhat similar ecliptic. This is what we've always believed and this is essentially what we're taught in schools as well. However, we often find new things, new discoveries and new ideas, or sometimes we find actual proof of ideas that are years or even decades old. And this is kind of what happened here. So first of all, we know that generally speaking the ecliptic for every planet is not permanent. It does change with time, and most of this change is due to the gravitational influences from various planets as they orbit the Sun, but also from the galaxy itself, from various very massive objects in the galaxy, and especially from the central regions of the galaxy that possess the most mass. Today we refer to some of these effects as galactic tides, tides created by the mass in the galaxy itself. Galactic tides we know exist, but we don't really know enough about them, mostly because, um, I guess because the galaxy itself is very very big in size, and there are still a lot of things for us to discover in it. And so in that sense, we're still kind of scratching the surface of what the galactic tides can do to various objects in the solar system. And back in mid-80s, there was at least one study that tried to investigate or tried to analyze the galactic influence, the tide influence, on the comets present in this large region known as the Oort Cloud, where most of the long-distance comets usually come from. So generally, when we actually see a comet from coming from somewhere really, really far away, it comes from the Oort Cloud. But back then, we didn't really have enough observations or enough telescopes being able to measure the precise orbits of these comets, and in the last few decades, we've collected enough data to actually finally see where most of these comets end up at the end. In other words, in the last few decades, we were able to acquire much more accurate measurements of the so-called aphelion, or the farthest point of the orbit, of many different comets we've discovered in the last few decades. Because of this, we now know where most of these comets end up, and of course we understand how long they actually take to go around the solar system, where they most likely started, and, in some cases, what might happen to them at the end. And I guess to our surprise, what the scientists behind this paper that you can also find in the description below discovered is that it seems our solar system has yet another plane of orbit, but this one specifically is for comets and for very distant objects. In some sense, it would kind of look like this. This is the image provided by the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. Here you can see that's the ecliptic of different planets, but right here we have another plane that's uniquely for distant comets with the angle right here being about 120 degrees on this side and about 60 degrees on the other side. And the only reasonable explanation that the scientists could come up with is that this is most likely caused by the galactic tides as the solar system orbits around the center of the galaxy. Or in other words, the center of the galaxy itself causes the shape of the solar system to slightly change because of the gravitational pull from the center of the galaxy. And although there is a possibility that maybe this plane is caused by something else, possibly even, for example, Planet 9, or some other massive object relatively far away from the Sun that's causing this to occur, the simplest and the most likely explanation is that it is caused by the galactic tides. While at the same time, this also raises the question whether some of the evidence from the uh, search for the Planet 9, for example, could also be explained by the actual effects from gravitational tides. And although the new plane doesn't really have a name yet, the scientists behind this paper refer to it as the empty ecliptic. The reason they actually call it that is pretty interesting. What they did to try to justify their idea is run a few simulations to try to see what happens to the solar system as it evolves over billions of years. In their simulation, in the beginning, this plane was completely empty. There was nothing in it. That's why they decided to call it the empty ecliptic. 
But with time, as the solar system orbited around the galaxy, and as the solar system received more gravitational effects, not from just the Sun and the planets, but also from the galaxy itself, another new ecliptic started forming in the farthest reaches of the solar system, slowly populating the empty ecliptic with comets. Now, we don't really know, obviously, how many there are or what other objects we might discover there. For all we know, that's actually where we'll find Planet 9 if it exists. But what we are almost certain about is that it does exist and many comets are there and many comets are actually coming from this direction. And this of course also implies that in general our solar system is way way more complex and in some sense more complicated than most high school books ever tell you about. In other words, our solar system doesn't just look flat like this. It definitely has at least one more plane in it and for all we know maybe even more. For all we know, maybe some other planes were formed by some other gravitational effects from other objects orbiting in the vicinity of the solar system. And I'm sure with time, as our telescopes get better, we might even discover some really unusual, very mysterious and completely unexpected objects hiding in the vicinity of the solar system. Although for now we don't really know what else we'll discover there. We just know that this plane seems to exist and this is where comets are coming from for the most part. But anyway, until we learn more or until we discover something else about the so-called empty ecliptic, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out some of the other videos on the channel, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.